Module 4, Creating Your Own Distributed Algorithms. In this talk, we will learn how to plan an algorithm, how to generate GAMS algorithms, why GAMS algorithms are usually better than threads, how to control knowledge dissemination, and how to change algorithms at runtime. Before we implement our algorithm, let's talk about what an algorithm is. An algorithm is a logic that governs behavior for an autonomous system. In GAMS, an algorithm is also a class that controls a platform. There are two things to understand about algorithms as well. Algorithms can be composed of other algorithms. In GAMS, we call this an executor algorithm, an algorithm that executes other algorithms. Next, let's talk about the concept of agents. An agent is an autonomous entity that contains an algorithm and a platform in GAMS. Some agent algorithms are only interested in their own agency. We often call these agents self-interested. However, most algorithms interact with other agents, including friends or foes. Multiple interacting agents are often called a multi-agent system. When discussing multi-agent systems, most researchers assume the interaction they're doing is collaborative toward a common goal. GAMS includes over a dozen algorithms for general purpose usage. These include coverage algorithms for applications like search and rescue, waypoints and executor functions for general purpose things, and also some adversarial algorithms that you can try out in your own simulations. The collection has both self-interested agent algorithms and multi-agent algorithms. Algorithm definitions contain both an algorithm implementation and what's called a factory method. This factory method is important because it allows us to change an algorithm at runtime whenever we feel the situation di dictates it. Now that we've talked about algorithms and agents, let's talk about how to plan your algorithm. The first question you should ask yourself is, is your algorithm self-interested or does it actually care about the other agents in your system? The second question to ask yourself is, does my algorithm need to share any information with other agents? Remember that world model in Madara? Madara gives us a way to keep local information or to share it globally. The way it does this is with a period. If your variable has a period in front of it, that means to keep it local, to not share it with anyone. So in this case, you can see that we've come up with an agent location that we want to share with everyone, and we also have an encrypted secret that we're going to share globally with everyone as well. The idea here is that since it's encrypted, you can share it with anyone, but they'll need to have their own private key to be able to decrypt this in a way that would give them useful information from it. The dot secret variable, however, will never be attempted to broadcast across the network. Global variables can be one way by adding filters to the transport layer. Essentially, Madara's transport system allows you to add on receive, on send, and on rebroadcast filters that can be applied to either shape knowledge into the knowledge base or to shape knowledge from the knowledge base to the network. So, if we wanted to change the way global variables are being shared over the network, we could add an onReceive filter on this agent location that essentially causes it to drop that information before being applied to the knowledge base. Another question to ask yourself is, do you understand what your algorithm is supposed to do? This is actually the hardest part of coding an algorithm, is visualizing or understanding exactly what your algorithm wants to do. Many people start an algorithm just wanting to start something, but really, you should plan out what your algorithm needs to do. So, can you visualize it? Can you draw it on a piece of paper? Let's think of an algorithm that we're going to do in this module. We're going to have a leader voted for by all the agents participating among a group called allies. GAMS provides group primitives that we're going to use, so we don't have to create our own group primitives. GAMS also provides some basic generic voting and auction techniques, but we're going to create our own simple consensus model. Let's generate a leader election algorithm that we just planned called vote in a project called leader elect. So open your Linux terminal, use the gpc.pl to create a new project called leader elect. Then change directory into that leader elect project and create a new algorithm called vote. After you run these gpc commands, you're going to have three new files created in your directory structure. The first two files are vote.h and vote.cpp in your source algorithms folder. And the third file is the controller.cpp file in your source directory. You're not going to have to modify your controller.cpp file, but we will be modifying our vote.h and vote.cpp file. Don't worry, these files are also included as part of the tutorial materials you've been handed with your slide notes. Let's talk about what has been generated by the GPC in your vote.h and vote.cpp files. First, algorithms have platforms and self information that are ready to use. They also have methods analyze, plan, and execute that you can implement in any way you see fit. The controller adds this vote algorithm factory into itself so that you can call it later. 
The controller has also been modified to include a vote algorithm factory. This factory allows users to call vote remotely by either modifying the agent.id algorithm variable or the swarm.algorithm variable. Agent.id's algorithm variable is essentially specific to a certain agent. You're telling agent.0, for instance, to run vote by itself. If you run swarm.algorithm equals vote, then you're telling the entire swarm, all the agents participating in your simulation or in your deployment, to also run the vote algorithm. Users can additionally specify algorithm in the sim folder. Simply edit the agent.mf files, or you can also specify algorithm vote to the gpc.pl when generating your algorithm. Now that we've planned our algorithm and generated the skeleton scaffolding for our algorithm, let's go ahead and implement it. In the analyze method, we're going to look inside of our group allies for the leader. Essentially, the person with the lowest ID is going to be the leader. We're going to assign a variable agent dot whatever our own ID is dot leader to the person we vote for, the agent we vote for, to be the leader of our formation. We're not going to do anything special in the plan method. Instead, we're just going to use the function that GPC generated for us. In the execute function, we're going to move to a location around the leader based on our own ID. This may sound daunting, so let's visualize what exactly we're going to implement in the vote algorithm. Location is going to be based on a sorted ranking in the allies group. The zeroth ranking is going to be the leader, and he's at the center position. Everyone else will surround the leader. Any other agent not in the zero through eighth ranking is going to stay wherever they're currently at. Now that we have a good visual and a good understanding of what the vote algorithm is supposed to do, let's implement it. By the way, if you get lost at any part of this module, please refer to your slide notes. They include all the text you see here, including the full implementation of vote.h and vote.cpp. I'm going to go over a high-level understanding of what is inside of these files so you can understand exactly how we came to a working algorithm. First, we specify two header includes, group base and string, at the top of the document. Group base we need for be able to reference the allies group to look at its members and to be able to see what our ranking in the group is. The second include is about the string container class in Madara. This is a container class that allows us to have a reference inside the knowledge base to a string value. You can see at the bottom of the class that we have this container, my leader, which is going to be who we're going to vote for so other people know exactly who we think the leader is. We can use this value later to see if everyone is agreeing on the same leader. In our implementation, we don't double check to see this, but in the future, if you want to make a more interesting and more effective voting algorithm, you could use something like this. You can also see that we have a pointer to the allies group, and we also have an agent vector of the members of that group included in the header file. Now that we're done with setting up the vote header file, let's look into implementing what needs to be done in the vote.cpp file. First, we're going to add five new includes to the top of the document. This includes the group factory repository class, the position class, and the Cartesian frame and GPS frame classes. Next, in the constructor class for vote, we're going to add some initialization code for our my leader string container, as well as setting up the group factory repository to point to group.allies. Next, let's modify the analyze method inside of vote. The first step is going to be sorting the member listing. First, we synchronize the group with whatever changes have been made to the group, including adding new members or removing them. Then, we get the member list into our members variable, and we sort this list in ascending order. Next, we cast our vote for who should be leader by looking at the lowest ranked member in the group member list. If you remember from the planning stages of this algorithm, we only implemented analyze and execute. We left plan exactly as it was. Next, we're going to implement the execute method. In the execute method, we're going to perform the actual movements that put us around the leader. First things first, we find out where the leader is located. Then, we figure out what our rank is in the members listing. Next, we're going to determine the row and column in the formation based on our rank that we retrieved earlier. As an example, if your ranking in the list is 2, then your position variable will be 1, and that'll put you at row 1 and column 0 of the formation that you can see to the left. Last, we determine our future location, the leader frame, and we move to that location. Believe it or not, that's all you have to implement to have your own vote algorithm. The fourth thing we do to GPC is we specify a group of this group.allies, which will include all the agents we've created. The last thing we do is set the GAMS debug levels to 3 and the Madara debug levels to 1. 1 is essentially warnings and errors, and 3 are major events.
Compilation of this new algorithm can be done through the action.sh script that you generate when you create a new project with gpc.pl. We covered a lot of ground from slide 9 through 17, so let's take a moment and walk through each step to demonstrate our new algorithm. First, we copy the lines from slide 9 to create a new GAMS project with our vote algorithm. As you can see, we can see a vote.cpp and a vote.header file that are created by this gpc.pl script we ran earlier. Now we go into the uh, tutorial materials provided with this course and copy the vote header file and the vote cpp file so we can use those and copy those into the source algorithms directory inside of the new project we created. So again, we're going to copy vote.star and we're going to source it into the projects leader elect source algorithms directory that we had created through the gpc.pl command. You can check your file by looking inside of here and looking for comments like added from slide 12, creating distributed algorithms, to tell that this is actually the vote.h that is included in the tutorial materials. Next, we copy the commands from slide 17 to configure the simulation to run. All right, last we copy the slide note commands to run the action.sh program with the options to compile, run, and sim our algorithm. As you can see, VREP starts up and all the agents are right in front of us. Each agent is going to arrange itself into a formation around the leader in the cardinal directions and also in the northeast, northwest, southwest, and southeast corners. You can see them moving into position right now. As they get into position, in their final positions, they're going to stop and wait for the leader to do something. If we really wanted to test this algorithm out even more, we might have the leader move around and see if the formation follows them. We don't do that in this tutorial, but it's something you can easily do in your own time. All right, everyone's in place. The formation will hold until you cancel the simulation. Believe it or not, the algorithm we just created works in real-world systems like inside our drone lab with no changes required to the algorithm. Future tutorial series may be possible with demonstrations in our drone lab or outdoors in boats or even in your own custom robotics. Keep checking the SEI website for information on new autonomy tutorials and the availability of on-site or customized tutorials for your business or research group. You may not realize it, but you've learned a lot about GAMS and MADAR in this tutorial series. You've learned what GAMS and MADARA are, how they're different from ROS, you've learned how to install GAMS and MADARA, how to create and configure distributed autonomy projects, how to add external libraries to distributed autonomy projects, and how to simulate those GAMS algorithms in VREP. You've also learned how to plan an autonomous algorithm, how to generate GAMS algorithms, and then how to control knowledge dissemination around a network, including how to change algorithms at runtime. If you're interested in future tutorials on autonomy, we'd love to hear from you. Some of the topics we've talked about creating are on-site tutorials with real drones in our drone lab, formally verifying distributed autonomous systems for correctness and safety, real-time scheduling with Mandar and GAMS, creating GAMS platforms for new robotic systems, and more advanced mission-focused algorithm creation. Additional topics include accent algorithms for manipulating robotic actuators or sensors while performing other core autonomy, such as movement.